Hi, I'm Ryan from Ratings.com. Today, we'll be comparing the performance of the Dell S2721 DGF and the Gigabyte M27Q. We'll be evaluating both of these on our standardized test bench to see how they compare and which one you should buy. Both are excellent gaming monitors with a high refresh rate, 1440p resolution, and IPS panels. They do have a few key differences that we'll get into in the review, but we'll start with the design. Both monitors have a fairly subdued gamer aesthetic that looks good and isn't too flashy, so it won't stand out too much in an office environment either. Both stands have a good amount of height and tilt adjustments, but the Dell also includes a wide swivel range as well as rotation into portrait mode. The Gigabyte, on the other hand, has no swivel adjustments and can't rotate. If you plan on VESA mounting your monitor, then both support a standard 100 by 100 mount, and the ergonomic limitations of the M27SQ stand won't be an issue. One important distinction here is that the Gigabyte only has a DP1.2 port compared to the Dell's DP1.4 port. This is important to keep in mind, since it means that if you want a 10-bit color depth, on the M27Q you'll be limited to 120Hz instead of the maximum refresh rate. The S2721 DGF doesn't have this limitation. Both monitors also have a built-in USB hub, with the main difference being the Gigabyte's built-in KVM switch. The M27Q has a USB-C port that supports data transfer, as well as DisplayPort Alt Mode and 10 watts of power delivery, an especially useful feature if you want to connect your work laptop for work during the day and gaming PC for gaming at night, all with the same set of peripherals. Unfortunately, 10 watts of power won't be enough for a laptop, so you'll still need to connect it to a charger. The M27Q also features a picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture -picture mode, so you can show the input from two different PCs simultaneously. Now, let's take a look at the tests. We'll start with the contrast. A high contrast ratio is important if you use the monitor in the dark for deep, dark scenes. Both of these monitors have an IPS panel with mediocre contrast. Our S2721 DGF has a slightly worse contrast ratio, though the exact value can change between units. Overall, we expect both to be fairly similar. Local dimming is a feature that controls the brightness of individual zones of the backlight. This allows for much deeper dark scenes in things like video games as the area of dark objects can be further darkened. As a result, the overall contrast can be boosted. The M27Q doesn't have this feature, whereas the S2721 DGF does. However, the feature only turns on when in HDR and it can't be disabled. This is somewhat unfortunate, since the implementation is terrible, with large edge-lit zones. Any dark scenes where the transitions are visible is very distracting. Now, a high peak brightness is important either in a bright room to counteract glare, or if you want brighter highlights and a more impactful image, especially in high dynamic range or HDR games. Both the Dell and the Gigabyte have good SDR brightness. The M27Q does get brighter in real scenes and in our test patterns. However, both monitors are more than bright enough to fight glare in most normal viewing conditions. In our HDR real scene, once again, the M27Q is the winner, getting quite a bit brighter. The Dell does manage to get brighter in our test patterns, but we don't expect that to be very noticeable. Neither monitor really gets bright enough to give a true cinematic HDR experience though. Also important for a bright room is good reflection handling. The S2721 DGF has better reflection handling overall, although given the brightness of both displays, reflections in a bright room really shouldn't be a problem on either. A potential downside of a hazy coating is if it causes small details like text to appear grainy. Text clarity is also impacted by a bunch of other factors though, like the sub-pixel arrangement. Now, here's where things get a little tricky. One of the biggest differences between these two monitors is the sub-pixel layout. The Dell has the standard RGB subpixel layout, but the Gigabyte has the far less common BGR layout. When no subpixel dimming is happening, both have very similar text clarity. You can also configure the Windows ClearType wizard to work with a BGR subpixel layout, and it looks good. The biggest issue with the BGR layout is with apps that have their own built-in subpixel dimming, which cannot be configured. Google Chrome does this on Windows, so it's important to keep in mind that if you're sensitive to text clarity with the M27Q, that it can vary quite a bit depending on what apps you're using. For more information, check out our full review of the M27Q on our website. Good viewing angles are important to ensure details at the far sides of the screen don't look washed out. On both monitors, they are quite good, with the Dell having a bit of an edge in the horizontal plane and the Gigabyte getting better vertically. Overall, the viewing angles shouldn't be a problem on either of these monitors. An overall uniform screen brightness and color is important when playing video games, to avoid distracting areas that are overly dark or bright. This does vary between units, but we expect our units to be about typical. Both monitors have great gray uniformity with very little dirty screen effect and fairly uniform brightness throughout. In dark scenes, there is some pretty serious IPS glow from both of our units with lots of clouding throughout. 
This does change quite a bit from panel to panel, though, so it's hard to say which of these two will perform better. On our units, the M27Q was better, though neither are particularly good. Accuracy in the standard sRGB color space is important as it's the standard for computer use. This is one category where the M27Q is the clear winner. Thanks to its dedicated sRGB mode, it has outstanding out-of-the-box accuracy. The S2721 DGF, on the other hand, doesn't have an sRGB mode, so colors appear oversaturated. The color temperature is also quite warm, with significant deviations in color accuracy. If you want to take full advantage of this monitor and display vivid colors in things like high dynamic range or HDR games, then once again the M27Q is the winner. It has a significantly wider gamut than the S2721 DGF, especially in the commonly used DCI-P3 color space. A high refresh rate is important for gaming. It allows the image to be drawn on the screen faster, which makes it more responsive. And if the monitor supports variable refresh rates, then you can get a smooth experience without tearing regardless of the changing frame rate. Both monitors have a high refresh rate, the Dell with a 165Hz maximum and the Gigabyte with a 170Hz. The 5Hz difference is negligible at these refresh rates though, so it's not really much of a difference. Both monitors also support FreeSync and are compatible with NVIDIA's G-Sync VRR implementations across the refresh rate range. Do note that over HDMI, G-Sync won't work and you'll be limited to 144Hz with both monitors. When playing video games, a fast response time is important for the clearest image without distracting blur. Both monitors have excellent response times at their maximum refresh rates. The Dell does have a slight edge, but it shouldn't be noticeable in real content. If the frame rate drops when you are gaming, then it's also important to have good response times at 60Hz. Luckily, both monitors also have great response times at 60Hz. The recommended overdrive setting for both is also the same across the refresh rate range, which is great. If you really want the clearest image when playing fast-paced games, then black frame insertion or backlight strobing features are useful to reduce blur caused by the persistence of the image during a full frame. The S2721 DGF does not support any black frame insertion feature to help improve motion clarity, which is unfortunate. The M27Q, on the other hand, does support BFI, which does a pretty good job, although it does lock the overdrive to a speed setting, which results in some noticeable overshoot trailing the image. Now, a low input lag is really important for a responsive feel when playing video games, and unsurprisingly, once again, both monitors are great in this regard. You shouldn't notice any input lag with either monitor. So, this brings us to the main question, which one should you buy? In almost every category, both of these monitors are very similar. They have a lot more in common than they do differences, so we'll focus on the biggest differences here. One of the big ones is the added productivity features on the Gigabyte M27Q. Depending on your workflow, the KVM features can be very useful. And it also features a picture-in-picture -picture and picture-by-picture -picture mode, which the Dell simply doesn't have. Although, if you plan on using the included stand, the S2721 DGF does offer significantly better ergonomics. Another difference is the built-in sRGB mode on the M27Q. Yet another feature the Dell doesn't have, which is unfortunate, especially if you're not a fan of an oversaturated image. The only downside you'll need to keep in mind for the M27Q is the BGR subpixel layout. So if that doesn't bother you, just go with the Gigabyte. It's significantly less expensive, has more features, and equivalent performance to the Dell S2721 DGF.